All right, so what we are going to do today is uh, look at one particular technique that is used for nonlinear systems. And uh, this is uh, probably one of the first techniques that came in nonlinear systems, and it's amazing. It's a frequency domain based technique. But uh, subsequently, of course, uh, uh, the, with the discovery of uh, uh, circle criterion and so on, uh, this, uh, this particular criterion is more easier to understand. But uh, how, uh, so this, this criterion is called Popov criterion and it was um, uh, discovered by uh, Popov in 1962. And uh, how uh, the techniques that Popov used, of course, are uh, one way to view the Popov criterion. And in fact, the Popov criterion can uh, be looked at from several viewpoints. So, what I would like to do is look at uh, the Popov criterion in terms of loop transformations. So. Uh, for that, uh, we first uh, recall what we did with loop transformations. So, uh, if you recall, so uh, we we were always interested in a linear plant and a nonlinearity, and they are interconnected in this feedback. Uh, feedback kind of situation and then of course without giving any inputs we are interested in knowing whether this uh, feedback uh, uh, this feedback circuit is uh, asymptotically stable okay now uh, of course this nonlinearity could belong to uh, various kinds of classes and so uh, we had earlier uh, already said like for example the nonlinearity could uh, belong to the belong to the k infinity class now what we mean by that is that if you draw the nonlinearity characteristics so think of the input to the nonlinearity as sigma output to the nonlinearity as psi then if you plot sigma against psi then uh, here I have uh, this line with slope k and then if the nonlinearity is in this sector what it means is that the nonlinearity is something like that. Okay. So, essentially the nonlinearity is something that lies in, uh, in the first quadrant in between this line and the, and the uh, zeta axis um, and uh, similarly in out here. So, you know what I am shading that is the area where the nonlinear uh, nonlinear characteristics lie. Okay. Now, um, going back to the loop if you think of this sigma as the input to the nonlinearity and psi as the output to the nonlinearity then by the way this is uh, this is drawn the input to the linear plant is minus psi and the output of the linear plant is sigma. Okay. In other words, uh, G s can be thought of as uh, sigma divided by minus psi. Okay. Now, uh, in the loop transformations, what is done is this nonlinearity is uh, changed. Okay. Now, for, uh, for a nonlinearity in this class, for example, we can convert this into a new nonlinearity in the zero infinity class and the way we do it is uh, the following. So, uh, what we do is in this particular case we keep uh, the output as it is. Okay. So, here we have the nonlinearity and uh, let us say the output is psi, but we modify the input. So, we continue to have the input psi but what we do is we uh, use a use a feedback okay and um, and uh, what uh, uh, for for example we could think of uh, a new input to a nonlinearity sigma 1 and the sigma 1 is given by um, let's say uh, k times psi minus sigma 
k times psi minus sigma. No, sorry. Maybe uh, okay. So uh, so we think of the new uh, the new input sigma one as being um, psi minus k sigma psi minus k sigma. No, I'm uh, I'm sorry. So uh, we in in this particular case, because it's in the uh, k infinity sector, it's not uh, the psi that we change. So uh, okay, let me use a new sheet. Okay, so we have uh, the linear plant and the nonlinearity, and uh, we have sigma minus, and this is psi. So, this is minus psi, this is sigma and we are assuming that this nonlinearity is in the k infinity sector. Okay, that is like saying you have this line of uh, slope k and so the nonlinearity uh, lies in the hatched portion. Okay. So, what we do is uh, we keep the input the same, but we change the output. So, okay. So how do we do that? Uh, we take the same nonlinearity. We keeping the input the same sigma, but therefore the output here is psi. But we construct a new output psi one, which is psi minus k sigma. Okay. So if we have to construct the psi one, which is psi minus k sigma, then we might as well have. Uh, a loop, so k times sigma, which we add to psi uh, with a minus sign, and so what we have here is psi one. Now, uh, I am drawing this uh, this box here, and whatever is inside the box, I call it a new nonlinearity. So let me call this nonlinearity N L one. Now, if you think of NL1, this NL1 has sigma as its input and psi1 as its output. Now, if you now look at the characteristics of NL1, which has sigma as the input and psi1 as the output. Now, if you look at psi1, which is psi minus k sigma, then uh, you see this particular nonlinearity NL1 will lie in the 0 infinity sector. Now, the reason being that uh, of course, the original one was lying in the hatched area. So, the psi could at most given a sigma, the psi could at most be k uh, given a sigma, the psi could at most be k sigma. And so, if you are doing psi minus k sigma, it could come right down to 0 and so you have the zero infinity sector so so this nonlinearity that you have this nonlinearity is in the zero infinity sector now the output of this and the input so the input is sigma and the output is minus psi and so we will try and maintain a similar configuration so this psi 1 is the one which is fed back Okay. Now, uh, if psi 1 is the one which is fed back and we are interested in this g s, we would of course, like the input of g s to be minus psi rather than minus psi 1. So, what we do is we modify the input and you see and we would like the output of the linear part the output of the linear part is sigma and we would continue that sigma into the input of this new nonlinearity, but the linear plant we would modify in the following way. So, the you have sigma, but what we do now is we take the sigma and uh, multiply it by k and we would uh, feed that back with a negative sign in here. 
So, now if you see and then we would give that input to G s. So, now if you see psi 1, so out here the signal is minus psi 1 and to that uh, from that k sigma is subtracted, but minus psi 1 is minus psi plus k sigma. So, that plus k sigma is cancelled and so what finally you have in the input of the original linear plant is minus psi, which is precisely what you had here. So, the linear plant can be as it was. And so, by modifying the nonlinearity, we also modify the linear plant and therefore, what you have effectively is the same as what you had here. And so, the way the, so the new linear plant that you get is what is contained inside this box and let me call it G 1 of s. And if you want to look at the transfer function of G 1 of s, G 1 of s has as its output sigma and as its input minus psi 1. For psi 1 I substitute and I get sigma upon minus psi plus k sigma and this then above and below if I divide by minus psi 1, I end up with g upon 1 plus k g. So, this g 1 this new linear plant is related to the old linear plant in the following way. So, g 1 is equal to g 1 plus k g. Okay. So, this is the kind of thing that we did. So, so I mean uh, so now uh, we can talk about asymptotic stability of this is the same as the asymptotic stability of this loop, but in this loop because this new nonlinearity is in the 0 infinity sector then we know that the linear plant must be a positive real plant. In other words G 1 s if G 1 s is positive real then this system is asymptotically stable but G 1 of s being positive real is saying that as far as this thing is concerned it is asymptotically stable if g upon 1 plus k g is positive real. Now, if you look at it very carefully the original system what we have done in this system is in this loop with the uh, in this uh, arm with the nonlinearity we have fed back with a minus uh, I mean it is a negative feedback with k. Uh, of course, considering that the nonlinearity is going this way this is really a feed forward, but uh, up there we do the same thing we take the sigma multiply it by k and feed it back. So, upstairs it is a it is a negative feedback and here it is a negative feed forward. Okay. And in this way, we managed to convert a nonlinearity in the 0 uh, in the k infinity sector into a nonlinearity in the 0 infinity sector. Okay. Now, um, in the same way, uh, we do these other loop transformations. So, for example, had the nonlinearity had the nonlinearity been in the 0 k sector. Okay. So, suppose the nonlinearity belong to the 0 k sector. So, that is like saying uh, if you think of this as sigma and this is psi that is sigma and psi this is minus psi this is sigma. Then uh, the, this nonlinearity has characteristics which lie in this hatch portion. Uh, this is the line with slope k. Okay. Now, uh, again our endeavor would be to convert this nonlinearity into a nonlinearity in the 0 infinity sector. And so, uh, how, how, does, how does one do that? So, in the earlier case we saw that we kept the input the same, but changed the output. Okay. In this case one approach that we could take is we could keep the output the same and change the input. Okay, so, let us do that. So, you could take this nonlinearity and uh, its output is psi okay, and so the new output will continue to be psi. Uh, what we would do is we will create this nonlinearity this new nonlinearity 
Yeah, and uh, let me call this nonlinearity NL1 now, such that the input is changed. Okay. So, let me call the input to this nonlinearity sigma 1. And uh, what is sigma 1? Well, let us take sigma 1 to be sigma minus 1 by k of psi. Okay. So, now if you take sigma 1 to be sigma minus 1 by k of psi, so we feed back from here with a gain 1 by k in here and we add this. Then sigma 1 added to you know 1 by k times psi will end up in us getting just sigma here. So, so the nonlinearity, the original nonlinearity, you know, the, its characteristics are sort of preserved out here. But uh, what we have done is that the output we have fed back. Uh, yeah, we have fed back. Of course, but it's a positive feedback, such that it cancels this. Huh? Now, if we do this, then. Uh, this nonlinearity, okay. So uh, why why is this nonlinearity now in the uh, in the uh, zero infinity sector? Well, uh, uh, you can you can see that uh, if uh, sigma was the original input and psi was the output, but we modify the input to be sigma minus one by k psi, then uh, then so sigma is here and. Uh, 1 by k psi. So, suppose the point was let us say out here that means, okay. so uh, if it was uh, psi was k times sigma, then what we are saying is that sigma 1 the new input is going to be sigma minus 1 by k of k sigma that means, sigma 1 is going to be 0. So, you are going to get that same output with 0 as the input. I mean, close to zero as the input. So one can show that this nonlinearity, this new nonlinearity that you created, n will n l one, is in the zero infinity sector. And so now going back to the other portion, the linear part. So if you have minus feedback, so what you have here is minus psi. So uh, we could put the linear plant there. Okay. So, if you put the linear plant here, from here you know that with minus i as the input sigma must be the output, but we want sigma 1 to be the input here. So, we have to modify this. So, what we do is we take this minus psi and multiply it by 1 by k and add it to the sigma. So, then effectively what you have here is sigma 1. So, this is the feedback that you will have. So, now this here is the linear part here g 1 of s and so g 1 of s interconnected to this new nonlinearity n l 1 is equivalent to g of s interconnected to this non original nonlinearity n l. Now, if you look at uh, the arrangement that we have done. What we have done here is of course, here of course, the signal is flowing this way, but what we have done is we have taken a, the psi here and uh, multiplied it by again 1 by k and uh, put it back here with a positive sign. And so, here also we do the same thing. So, uh, just like in the last case, we do exactly the similar things in the upper and the lower. Of course, what it means is here it is a positive feedback and here it is a positive feed forward. Now, in this case of course, this new g 1 of s turns out to be nothing but g of s plus 1 by k. Okay. And then uh, therefore, for this system to be asymptotically stable, what we require is that this new plant G 1 of s, because this nonlinearity is in the 0 infinity sector, we want this G 1 of s to be 
uh, positive real. In the other words, g of s plus 1 by k, this whole thing must be positive real. Uh, of course, this then you could interpret as saying that the uh, Nyquist plot of g of s should lie to the right of minus 1 by k. Now, uh, notice that in the last case and in this case, in both these cases, what you have done is some sort of feed back, feed, feed forward that you have done and whatever you do in this arm which contains the nonlinearity, you do a similar thing up there with the linearity. Okay? And uh, what it effectively does is it neutralizes the effect of that thing in some way, so that the, the original nonlinearity and the original linearity still maintain the relation that they were supposed to maintain. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the point is that um, the gains that we used in both these situations were gains that, uh, uh, that were constant gains. But uh, perhaps we could introduce gains uh, maybe in such a way or maybe in series with the linear plant, uh, for example, in series with the nonlinearity or uh, in series with in series with the nonlinearity and therefore in series with the uh, linear plant and so on, and uh, modify the loops. So okay, so let's just try out one particular uh, example. Uh, so, for example, if the original plant is like that uh, with a nonlinearity like this, now let's not uh, bother about uh, where the nonlinearity lies, but let's do the following. So, the suppose the nonlinearity is here, and uh, let's assume that the output to the nonlinearity is kept the same. So, the output is kept as psi. But uh, what we do is uh, input. Okay, so one one would want the input here to be sigma, but maybe we put a gain here, uh, and maybe the gain uh, the gain that one puts here is let's say one by k. So what that would mean is out here the signal that you have is k sigma. And uh, we could think of uh, unity unity feed feedback. So just like in the last case, but I've pushed the gain from uh, one by k from the feedback loop in here. So then we could think of the new input as sigma one, and so in this case you have sigma one is uh, k sigma minus psi and so this here is our nonlinearity then in order to find the equivalent thing to uh, equivalent interconnection to this interconnection you have a gs here so this psi so this minus psi so the output of this is sigma but you want to get sigma 1, sigma 1 is obtained this way. So, what we can do is multiply this by k. So, therefore, you get k sigma and then you take this minus psi and feed it forward. Okay? And therefore, what you will get is sigma 1 there. Okay? Now, the construction that I have done here is exactly the same as the earlier construction that I did. So, this construction and this construction are exactly the same. The only thing is that this gain I pushed it in here and so therefore, this gain has to get pushed in here, but when, you, when I do that here it is 1 by k, there when it gets pushed it gets pushed to k and uh, that is essentially because uh, here it is in the in the uh, feedback arm and there it is in the feed forward arm. So, when you put it in series it becomes k whereas, uh, from the feedback arm it remains as it is. Okay. And so, what we have effectively done is we have done 
I mean, we could just assume that this nonlinearity here is really a nonlinearity in the 0 k sector, and therefore, this new nonlinearity n l 1. So, n l 1 would then be in the 0 infinity sector, and this is the original plan G s and the new plan G 1 of s. Uh, the the uh, the transfer function for g1 of s is 1 plus k times gs which of course is roughly the same as uh, the result that we had got earlier only it is uh, this new g1 of s is going to be k times that old g1 of s but you know by just multiplying by a scalar k you don't change anything okay now, uh, instead of having gains here, maybe we could have transfer functions. Okay. So, um, so, one kind of transfer function that you could possibly have is uh, if you think uh, you have G s here and you have a nonlinearity and uh, let us uh, let us again assume that this nonlinearity is in the 0 k sector and uh, what we do is a construction similar to the earlier construction. So, what we do is this nonlinearity the okay, so this sigma this is psi therefore, you have the signal minus psi here sigma there and the nonlinearity is in the 0 k sector which essentially means this hatched area is where you have the nonlinearity. this is sigma, this is psi. So, what we do is this nonlinearity we multiply by first order transfer function like this. So, if you multiply the nonlinearity by a first order transfer function like this, and of course, this nonlinearity is the same as this nonlinearity. So, the signals across you want to maintain to be the signals across there. So, you have sigma here and psi here. And so, if you use this psi in the feedback, so, so you have minus psi here. So, let us assume you have a the transfer function g s here. So, what you would get here is sigma. Okay, and uh, let me uh, let me do the following. Let me assume that uh, there is a there is a gain here, which is one by k of the psi, and I uh, feed it. Uh, back that way. Okay. So, if you have something like this, you should do a similar thing there. So, uh, okay. and I have this new input sigma 1 and so, this is my modified nonlinearity n l 1. So, now uh, one would like to do uh, something out there such so that this and that sort of matches up. So, uh, what we do up there is uh, I can again. So, here I have a feedback positive feedback loop. So, there is a plus sign here and a gain of 1 by k. So, I take this with a gain of 1 by k and I am going to add it here with a plus sign. And uh, earlier we saw that uh, if you had uh, if you had 1 by k here, then you have k here. So, we will just blindly do that and we will see what happens. So, let us blindly do that. So, the reciprocal of this is 1 plus a s. So, let us put that gain 1 plus a s out there and uh, let me call this output that comes here sigma 1 and connect it up here. Okay. Okay. 
so maybe um, this this is looking all uh, too too clamped up so maybe i'll use a new sheet with uh, this this particular diagram so um, so we had the nonlinearity and then we used 1 upon 1 plus a s here and again a 1 plus k which we fed back in here with a positive sign and this whole thing is the new nonlinear system NL1 let me call it and so NL1's output is psi input is sigma 1 this is sigma here okay uh, we are assuming this is sigma here we do not yet know but um, let us just uh, do the constructions and see whether uh, we get something meaningful g s so with the input minus psi so the output here must be sigma and then we have gain like that and uh, what we do is a similar construction so again of 1 by k through here uh, again with a positive sign right now uh, from the earlier situation here we know g of s is uh, sigma by minus psi so let us just make this assumption. So assuming that the output of this nonlinearity is still xi, which is fed back here. So you have minus psi here. So this must be sigma. Now, if sigma passes through here, what you get here is going to be a times sigma dot plus sigma. And then when you have this thing, so what you are going to get is minus 1 by k psi. And this whole thing is sigma 1. Let us assume this whole thing is sigma 1. Okay. Now, if this whole thing is sigma 1, so sigma 1, which is coming in here, okay, you have psi 1 by k times psi added to it. So, what you have here the signal here is going to be a times sigma dot plus sigma. And if you have the signal a times sigma dot plus sigma here, then 1 upon 1 plus a s acting on that will in fact give you the signal sigma. So, this whole thing looks consistent. So, this whole linear plant that you have let us call that g 1 of s and this whole non new nonlinearity n l 1. Okay. Then, then perhaps we could uh, say that uh, this interconnection is asymptotically stable and if we can say that this uh, interconnection is asymptotically stable. Uh, that uh, would be equivalent to going back to the original plant and saying that this interconnection is asymptotically stable. Now, uh, in here, if you look at this linear plant G 1 s, this linear plant G 1 s is given by 1 plus a s times G s plus 1 by k. Now, if this linear plant is positive real okay so now so now let's make some assumptions so if this is passive and this is passive then the interconnection of two passive systems is passive okay and so i mean this being passive and this being passive the interconnection is passive so because each one of them is passive one could find a, a lyapunov function uh, or a storage function for each one of them and uh, the storage functions uh, so recall that for passivity uh, if you have a passive system then you have a storage function v such that v dot is less than input times output 
yeah this this is how we sort of uh, less than equal to input times output this is how we characterize passivity okay so uh, what we can start doing is the following so let's assume that this whole plant this whole new linear plant g1 of s is passive now this whole thing being passive is like saying that g1 of s which is 1 plus as times gs plus 1 by k this is positive real okay and then we have gone through several of these uh, theorems earlier like uh, the kalman yakubovich lemma by which one can find for for this part a storage function v1 such that v1 dot is less than equal to the input times the output which in this case is minus sigma times psi okay so if you can also show that this guy is passive then the sum of these two is going to be passive so how to show that this this particular uh, uh, transfer function is also passive now for that what we will do is uh, we will look at the differential equation so uh, the differential equation that one could look at is the following this whole nonlinearity is there. So, uh, okay, so let me write it out uh, in, in the following way. So, let me call the, uh, the nonlinearity f, okay, such that if sigma is the input, then uh, psi is the output. And what, what I am really saying is psi is equal to f of sigma. Okay. And uh, then earlier we had 1 upon 1 plus a s here. And then we also had this feedback gain of 1 by k. Uh, All right. Now, if this is sigma, then of course, from the last slide, we saw that uh, this must be, uh, this signal here must be sigma plus a times sigma dot. Okay. And because of this, we know that sigma 1 must be given as uh, sigma plus a times sigma dot. plus 1 by k times psi. Okay. Now, let me write this psi using the nonlinearity thing. Let me write this psi as f of sigma and so I have sigma 1 is equal to sigma plus a times sigma dot plus 1 by k f of sigma. Okay. This thing is really like a differential equation with so think of this as a differential equation with sigma as the state variable and sigma 1 as the input yeah so okay so one could write uh, something like a state space equation saying a sigma dot is equal to minus sigma minus 1 by k f of sigma plus sigma 1, where sigma 1 is thought of as the input and sigma is the state and then of course, one could think of the output equation as psi is equal to f of sigma. Okay? So, take this equation, this differential equation where sigma is the state, sigma 1 is the input and this as the output equation. So, these two equations you have. Okay. Now, let us make one more assumption. Let us make the assumption that this nonlinearity, this nonlinearity f is in the 0 k sector. 
k is related to this k the, where the gain was 1 by k yeah so sigma psi so uh, the f the characteristics of f lie in the hatched area okay now if this is the case then i uh, i sort of uh, decide that i will take a Lyapunov function in the following way. You see, if the characteristic of this f, okay, so you see, if the characteristic of the f of the function f, so so we have this uh, differential equation a sigma dot is equal to minus sigma, sorry, minus one by k f of sigma plus sigma one and you have psi is equal to f of sigma okay that's the that's the system and uh, this f is such so if this is the slope k sigma psi f is such that f looks something like that okay now so this is the curve f of sigma then of course it would be clear that if you take integral of f of sigma d sigma going from 0 to some point x, then this quantity is always going to be positive because if that uh, x is somewhere here, then this integral is positive. If it is somewhere here, then this integral this integral is negative, but of course, the limits are going the other way. So, when you change the limit, it becomes positive. So, you get something like this. So, this is going to be greater than 0 for all x. Okay, so, uh, I have been using sigma as a state variable. So, maybe I could uh, just rewrite this as x. Uh, a x dot equal to minus x and 1 by k f of x plus u let me call it u the input and then I am saying y is equal to f of x. This is the state space equations this is the same equations as before and uh, we see that this function is such that if you take the integral from 0 to x this is true. So, I propose that we use a Lyapunov function v x given as this is equal to a times integral from 0 to x of f sigma d sigma and therefore, uh, this, this Lyapunov function or this Lyapunov function candidate has the property that this is greater than 0 for all x greater than yeah greater than 0 ok. So, now if you evaluate v dot of x. So, v dot of x from this evaluation is going to be a times f of x times x dot right. Now, a times x dot we can substitute in this. So, you get uh, minus x times f of x the first term and then you get minus 1 by k f of x squared that is that term and then uh, you get plus f x u. Okay. Now, if you take any x, x times f x f x is so for positive x f x is positive for negative x f x is negative. So, this quantity here x times f x is positive. So, minus of x times f x is negative. Similarly, this quantity here is also negative and therefore, one can conclude that v dot x is less than f x times u, but f x is y so, u times y. So, this system that you have, the state space system that you have with this 
particular Lyapunov function, you can see or storage function, you can see that this is passive. Okay. So, if you go back here, this system that we have drawn here, the system is passive with the storage function given as v is equal to a integral 0 to sigma f of uh, r dr. Okay, let me call this v 1 with the storage function. And uh, we already saw that in this interconnection that we were looking at this this portion because it is positive real has a storage function v 1 has a storage function v 1 such that v 1 dot is less than equal to minus minus sigma psi because the output here is sigma and the input is minus psi. Okay. And out here if you take this okay, let me call it v 2 then we know v 2 dot is less than is less than equal to the input sigma 1 times the output psi. Uh, sorry, I have to correct one thing here. Here the output is sigma 1 and not sigma and so it is minus sigma 1 psi. Okay. So, now if you take the Lyapunov function, if you take the Lyapunov function of that net system to be v 1 plus v 2 which is equal to okay so that v 1 would have been given by because that uh, uh, that linear plan that effective linear plan that you had so this is the v 1 this effective linear plan you could look at the state space realization of this and from that uh, you could uh, write in terms of the states of this thing as uh, some x transpose p x where this p will satisfy all the um, Kalman Yakubovich lemma conditions and uh, plus a times integral 0 to x of f of uh, r dr this as the net uh, uh, as the net uh, Lyapunov function v then you have v dot equal to v 1 dot plus v 2 dot which of course, we can calculate, but we know that v 1 dot this is less than v 1 dot we know is less than minus sigma 1 psi v 2 dot is less than sigma 1 psi. So, sum of these two is 0. So, v this thing that you had this uh, Lyapunov function is such that v dot is less than 0. And this quantity here is going to be positive because this quantity is going to be positive and this p has been obtained to be a positive definite matrix. Therefore, by Lyapunov theorem we have asymptotic stability. Okay. So, uh, what we are effectively saying, so this is what is called the Popov criterion. And what the Popov criterion is saying is the following that if you had a linear plant and you had a nonlinearity and you had it interconnected in this way, and this nonlinearity was in the 0k sector, and the linear plant was such that 1 plus A s times G s plus 1 by k is positive real, then this interconnection is going to be asymptotically stable. Yeah. Of course, this nonlinearity must be such that uh, it is a memoryless nonlinearity, yeah. the memoryless Lipschitz nonlinearity, but uh, this is the effective uh, result of the Popov criterion. So, it looks like I am out of time now. So, let me stop for now. <laughs>